So this leads us into different types of events. We could have mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive events. And what that means is events that cannot happen at the same time will be called mutually exclusive. Meaning, if I draw a card, a single card from a deck of 52 cards, we cannot have it both be a king and a queen at the exact same time because a king is a king and a queen is a queen. So those are considered mutually exclusive because they cannot happen or they are disjoint. So these are called disjoint events, which is also another word for mutually exclusive. Um, so disjoint, they are not connected in this Venn diagram. Now, not mutually exclusive, we could draw a king that is a spade. That would be okay because those are linked here where they overlap and have this intersection in the middle here. So they have this intersection of the king of spades here where this is not mutually exclusive or what we consider it as joint events. So these are joint events and these are disjoint events. So we're going to have an addition rule for probability here. If two events are mutually exclusive, then the probability that A or B will occur is this. So probability of A plus the probability of B. We just add them together. Now, if the two events are not mutually exclusive, then we will have to subtract out their intersection. So this is essentially saying we're going to add probability A, probability B, and then where do A and B intersect? Where do they cross over? And we're going to subtract that out. Now, the cool thing is actually this formula down on the bottom here is the same formula as above, and this could be used for actually mutually exclusive events as well. The reason why is because mutually exclusive means that the intersection is zero, so if we subtract zero, it's not going to do anything as well. So adding probabilities determine whether the events are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. Once you do that, we're going to find the probability. So Keisha or Keisha has a stack of eight baseball cards, five basketball cards, and six hockey cards. If she selects a card at random from the stack, what is the probability that it is a baseball or a hockey card? Well, if you notice here that we have baseball, basketball, and hockey cards, if we choose just out of those cards, um, a baseball card is not a basketball card and is not a hockey card. So these have to be mutually exclusive because you're only drawing those. There is nothing else to define those. So this is mutually exclusive where those events do not intersect. So they, they, they do not overlap at all. So if we think about eight cards, five cards, and six hockey cards, that will be a total of how many cards? Well, that's 19 if we add eight plus five plus six. So we know there's a total of eight there. So now if we want to think about it, we want the probability that it's a baseball or a hockey card. So the probability of baseball or hockey is essentially that formula where we're going to add the probability of your baseball and then we're going to add it to the probability of your hockey. So now we just have to find it. So very easily we know that the probability of baseball, well baseball has eight cards so that'll be eight out of 19 of the cards and then the probability of hockey there's six of those so we'll do six out of 19 and then we'll just combine those together. So this will give us a total of 14 out of 19, which if you want that as a percentage um, or a decimal, so you put a decimal as 0.7368, or it could be also 73.68% if you want it as well. Notice that this is between zero and one. Um, if you ever have anything bigger than 1 or less than 0, you did something wrong because probability has to be between 0 and 1. So just catch that out. So also, just to note, um, if we drew a quick Venn diagram of this, like we have a bunch of different cards here, and then we have baseball cards, which is, or sorry, basketball cards. No, baseball cards is 8. And then we have like basketball cards, which is 5. And then we have hockey cards, which is 6 which if you notice, they will not overlap at all. 
so they're all disjoint, hence mutually exclusive. So another example here, is it mutually exclusive or not? Um, find the probability. So suppose that 1,400 students, uh, 550 take Spanish, 700 take biology, and 500, or 400 take both Spanish and biology. What is the probability that a student selected at random takes Spanish or biology? So first off, both Spanish and biology, meaning that there is some intersection. So if we just quick draw a graph here, or a Venn diagram more appropriately, um, we have something like this. We have some overlap, which is going to be joint, or we know that it is not mutually exclusive here because it will intersect. These events can both happen at the same time. So let's say this one is Spanish, this one is biology here. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this picture in a little bit, but let's go ahead and use our formula here. So we want to find Spanish or biology, that probability. So the probability of Spanish or S or biology here, because it's not mutually exclusive, is going to be the probability of S plus the probability of biology, which is B, and then subtract the probability of S and B, or the intersection of both of them. So I like doing the intersection here um, just because it's either easier than writing end, which they're the same thing. So now, this probability here, we know there's a total of 1,400 students. So this whole Venn diagram here, this whole box of my sample space will be 1,400. So the bottom here is 1,400 because there is 1,400 students. And then for Spanish, we know Spanish is 550, so we'll put 550 over that. Now, we still have a total of 1,400 again, and then biology again is 700. And then what they both do, they still have a total of 1,400 students, and then where they cross over or both do it is 400 here. Now, when you simplify that, um, you just type it into your calculator and get a nice fraction, which I believe when we type that in here, we get 17 out of 28. So your calculator should be doing that. So that is our probability, which is less than or equal to one, and it's greater than or equal to zero, just as a quick check. So that is good. Now let's actually think about this as a Venn diagram. So there actually could be students that don't take Spanish and don't take biology. Oh, what a world, sometimes people don't take either. Um, so that would be everything outside of those circles. And this is not drawn to scale, it's just kind of helping us think about it. Um, the way to start this is we're going to start with the intersection, which is 400. We know that they both take Spanish and biology in the middle where they overlap. Now, we know that biology here, this circle, is going to be a total of 700. So we have to take into effect 400 plus what number is 700? Well, you'd have to add 300 to get this as being 700. Now, very similar, the Spanish bubble, which is going to be 550. We need 400 plus what number, which is 150, we'll add to 500. So this entire bubble here is 550. Now they overlap here. Now thinking about this formula, if we add this bubble, which is 700, we're adding this 400 and the 300, and then we're adding the 150 plus the 400 again, we're counting this 400 two times which is not okay. So that's why we have to subtract one out. Hence, this formula of subtracting out the intersection, because we double count it by chance. So this is your answer. It is not mutually exclusive, and this is our probability. So the last thing to talk about, um, just kind of probability versus odds, because you'll have a couple questions about what are odds and what is probability. They're very similar. Um, let's do the probability of drawing a spade. Remember, there's four suits. Um, so there's 13 of one color or one suit of cards out of 52 total cards because some standard decks or regular decks are 52 cards. You simplify that, that is just one fourth because there's four suits, so it should be one fourth, which is actually equal to 25%. So that is actually probability. Now, if we want to think about the odds of drawing a spade in a regular 52 deck card, it's very different. So we actually know we have 13 over, and what we do here is we take the 52 and we subtract the 13 out of there. 
So we're going to have 13 over 52 minus that suit to be our odd. It's going to be like 3 to 1 or 1 to 3 or something like that. Um, in this case, when you simplify that, we have 13 over 39, which is actually 1 over 3, which we count that as 1 to 3 or 1 to 3. That would be odds. So this is the odds. You have a 1 to 3 chance or your odds are 1 to 3 versus the probability of that event occurring. So that is the difference between odds and probability. So that is it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, have a good day.